Sanjeev, uh, Janssen, uh, which is a part of Johnson & Johnson, is leading the way in using AI to help inform major investment decisions across drug discovery, clinical trials, and commercial operations. Could you share some insights on how AI is transforming these areas at Janssen, influencing the investment and decision-making process, and any specific challenges you face with implementing these innovations in a regulated environment? Great, Sandy. Thank you, and uh, hello, everyone. Really good presentations today, uh, really smart people. It's like, it's trying to absorb all the numbers that were um, you know, coming at us here. So I work for Johnson & Johnson. I lead their data engineering and machine learning practice there. And you know, in a nutshell, what we do is we build AI-based solutions for namely patients, our, our doctors, and um, our, our customers uh, out there. And then I've worked for a bunch of life sciences companies in the past, so kind of know the journey that we have taken, especially in the, uh, in the AI and machine learning space. And, and the way uh, you know, we see this sort of uh, evolving on the machine learning side is always sort of looking at from the patient lens first. So you know, how the patient is sort of evolving, what the journeys are, are taking place for the patients, and then kind of layering in the, uh, uh, what we call is the other two Ps, which is the providers, which is uh, the doctors, and then also the payers, you know, what's going on in the insurance space. So, you know, these three intersections are, are the most sort of common ones uh, that we look at. And then, you know, the, the disease state also is becoming very, very complicated now. And this is where the patient journey is starting to become very, very complicated. And so how do you make sure that you're using the data to understand the patient journey and then making sure that you know, you, you're looking at these, these investments that you're making in the data part of it and then also targeting these patients and these, uh, these doctors appropriately. So there's, there's a lot going on there. And you know, as, we, as we continue through this discussion, we can talk about you know, how that landscape is changing, um, looking at the patient and then the various therapeutic areas for, uh, for the targeting of the patients. Fantastic, thank you, Sanjeev. A follow-up for you, Wendy. With Janssen's and other major pharma and, and biotech um, AI-focused companies um, pushed to integrate AI across the drug discovery and development processes, how does Ation's focus on real-world evidence support regulatory, regulatory compliance and decision-making? And are there any particular examples where real-world evidence has proven critical in guiding pharmaceutical innovation? Sure, so there was a lot in that question, Sandy. Um, very quickly, I'm Wendy Turin. I am Chief Data Officer for Ation, which is a company that focuses on generating evidence from what we call in healthcare real-world data, which I believe is the same as the alt data referred to in the title, but Really think about that as the claims data, the electronic medical record data, data from uh, reference laboratories, LabCorp, Quest. Anytime you as an individual touches the healthcare system, that information is recorded and accessible to be used for decision making. And Ation has technology tools and a centralized platform that um, Life sciences companies, so pharmaceutical companies, device companies, digital health organizations, investors like Sandy, we did some really exciting work together with Andrew as well, um, are leveraging these data to make all kinds of decisions across the development of their technologies early on through the commercialization of that life cycle. You heard Sanjeev talk a little bit about those use cases. So when we talk about the way that the regulators are starting to think about, we've, we've been sitting in a place for about six to, let's call it five to 10 years now, where the regulators are really starting to come along this journey of leveraging data that already exists, understanding that there has to be value there, that the technology is catching up and will allow us to access that data, that clinical trials are costly, that there, uh, there is fault and limitation in what you can study, the patient, 
um, population that you are able to access. And so, but, but the regulatory agencies, Sandy, to get back to the original question, I think are really finding themselves unable to keep up a little bit with the adva advancements in not only the data that's available, the technology tools, I'm going to tee you up on this one, Andrew, that, uh, that um, enable us to do, my technical term, really cool things with putting data that used to sit in silos together so we can make even more interesting insights, observations, whether we're using, to borrow language from the last panel, classical approaches or generative AI approaches, um, and then the AI tool. So the regulators are having a, a little bit of a challenge keeping up. And at the same time, we see out of the Centers for Device and Radiological Health, for example, uh, that organization has come out strongly and boldly with guidance that has put very clear um, thresholds and criteria for what they will accept and what they won't accept, for accelerating approvals for medical devices using data and not trials. We've seen the first um, expansion for an indication for robotic surgery. Not for nothing, this is a device that's been used off-label for over a decade, but now the regulators are using the data to make the decision. So lots of progress there. But I think that what's even more important is that the stakeholders that are going to drive commercialization and then value, and it, from what I've gathered in the couple hours that I've been here, the value is what this room is really interested in. The, the, um, the stakeholders that are really going to be in the position to drive value have been using this data for decades and are hungry to access it even more. <laughs>